As I'm sure you've heard by now, uh, a gunman opened fire at a midnight showing of The Dark Knight Rises in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, he killed 12 people and he injured many, many more. When I, I first heard this horrific news, I considered not doing interviews today uh, and just scrapping the episode entirely. But because the movie is still playing in theaters, um, I've decided to go ahead with the episode as planned, including the open which was shot on Wednesday. But uh, in addition to asking moviegoers what they thought of the film, I also asked them what they, their reaction to today's tragedy. Uh, of course, everyone here at Beyond the Trailer gives our deepest thoughts and prayers to all the victims in Aurora and uh, our gratitude to the Aurora Police Department as well as the other first responders. He might fight Bane in the movie, but some are saying Batman's real nemesis is Iron Man. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of The Dark Knight Rises. You don't owe these people anymore. You've given them everything. Not everything. Not yet. When The Hollywood Reporter, a top industry newspaper, reviewed The Dark Knight Rises earlier this week, they said the final entry in Christopher Nolan's franchise makes everything in the rival Marvel Universe look thoroughly silly and childish. Sure, the fans have been fighting since the Avengers broke box office records, including Batman's back in May, but it's downright shocking to see such hate spread to what are supposed to be professional levels. Meanwhile, fan hatred has only intensified, mainly on the Dark Knight side. Furious that Joss Whedon's film might eclipse or even stand shoulder to shoulder with Nolan's, they unleashed vicious attacks on the Avengers across the internet. And now that The Dark Knight Rises is hitting theaters, are attacking any critic who dares to give the film a less than glowing review. It's so bad that for the first time ever, Rotten Tomatoes has had to shut down user comments for a film. All this begs the question, is this hatred an unfortunate side effect of a fantastic final film, or an effort to silence those who dare to claim the Emperor has no clothes? After all, at Comic-Con last week, Warner Brothers was distributing The Dark Knight Rises decals and couldn't give them away. But that might be more indicative of the movie's poor marketing rather than interest in the movie itself. Warner Brothers has released uninspired poster after poster, nothing to match the clever ad campaign launched for The Dark Knight, which revolved around Heath Ledger's Joker. Indeed, one has to wonder if The Dark Knight Rises can match The Dark Knight without Ledger, whose iconic performance and tragic accidental death created a perfect storm of audience fascination. But instead of giving the audience anything quite as new and fresh as the Joker, here for the first time Nolan borrows heavily from another film, his own Inception, as Tom Hardy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Marion Cotillard all return. Going back to Rotten Tomatoes, The Dark Knight Rises is currently at a shocking 86%, while The Dark Knight was at 94%. The adventure is 92%. And while there's a lot at stake here for Nolan's legion of fans, there's a lot at stake for Warner Brothers as well. Christopher Nolan is the studio's one bright spot in an otherwise lackluster DC Cinematic Universe, and as a result, they're entrusting more and more of it to him. Now it's his turn to deliver, and to do so, The Dark Knight Rises will need to open somewhere near the Avengers 207 million debut, the biggest of all time. But without 3D, is that even possible? Warner Brothers is certainly going to try, as at the AMC Empire 25, the film plays every 20 minutes. However, at the end of the day, it might be the fans who are so brutally defending the film that does the most damage, turning off the casual moviegoer, even if all the hate does come from a good place. Let's go find out. How was the movie? I thought it was fantastic. It was a great end to a great trilogy. You know, I gotta say, I was disappointed in it. The story was good, but it's not as good as the second one. That movie was a masterpiece, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I think it's like really hard to top that, but I think it's pretty close. Maybe it was a little bit too much for mm -hmm. him to, to, to delve into. But I mean, being the third one, I understand he wanted to be bigger, uh, well, a lot bigger, a lot more grander than the other two. A lot of stuff going on, maybe not as cohesive, not as struct structurally sound as it could have been. If they remove some of the themes and Christopher Nolan wanted to cut 40 minutes from the movie, he could have, and some people probably would have been very happy with it. Another thing was the characters. I, I didn't really get into the characters. It just made me appreciate Heath Ledger's performance that much more. I think what Nolan did here was try and make a well-rounded cast. No one, no one to really stand mm. out. Uh, you know, really knock our socks off like he Ledger did. Of course, Michael Caine does a great job. Of course, Christian Bale does a great job. And Hathaway, I thought, did a great job. I had my skepticism, you know, especially for who they pick, you know, for Anne Hathaway. I mean, she's a great actress, but I didn't believe her playing a good Selena Kyle. But when I just watched it, I was mistaken. I still loved Heath Ledger's Joker probably throughout this entire Batman trilogy. I, he will still be the greatest villain of what I can see. Like, I can't even see them really doing a Joker at a, again. Yeah, really. you know, they're planning on rebooting Batman after this. Would you be interested in that? 
I'll watch it, but this is it. This is yeah. it for me. This is this is this is mine. Wow. This is my bad man. I don't think they could surpass this one, but I might. I think it's maybe going to be too far. You know, like it's kind of like re re rebooting uh, Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. You know. That, I mean, it was all right. I still love uh, Tim Burton's work in Batman, mm -hmm. and Batman Returns. I love Christian Nolan's Batman's trilogy. And um, if somebody else is going to take over, I don't mind seeing it. So what would you say to someone going into the theater? Don't expect number two. Just enjoy it for what it is. I, I think I got caught up in the hype. If you haven't seen the other two, make sure you see the other two first because it will pretty much lead you up to this. Don't complain. Sit down and watch it. You'll enjoy it. And last thing is, everything you want to say about the shootings in Colorado? You know, just the thoughts and prayers to all the people who, um, to the victims there, that they try to enjoy a night of enjoyment and entertainment, and it just took one person to, uh, you know, rob them of that. I just read it briefly. I think someone just wanted attention more than anything else. It's not that, uh, oh, maybe the midnight showings allowed this to happen, all the buzz, and maybe this brought out the lunatic. He was a lunatic in the first place, and somehow this lunatic got a gun. I think that's the main problem, and it's a tragedy but it's a tragedy that we seem unable to fix. My parents found out and they told me before I left my apartment, they told me uh, be safe and hope there's nothing going on here, but nothing happened here though. What do you give the movie on a one to 10? 10. I say eight and a half, nine? 8.5. Five, may maybe a six. I'll give it a nine. A nine. I'll give it a 9.5. I think it's about a nine. I gotta give this a 10. I'd give it a 12. So while it might not be as good as The Dark Knight, overall everyone feels Christopher Nolan has gone out on a high note, giving The Dark Knight Rises a 9. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from AMC Empire 25, and I hope it will go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.